Pork is by far my favorite ingredient. Whether I'm doing the porchetta with the tuna sauce or when I'm at home cooking for my son, making giant schnitzels the size of oval plates, which is his favorite thing in the entire world and mine as well. It's so versatile. Grip it and rip it. Who likes dry pork chops? I sure don't. This pig's already dead, and I don't want to kill it again. My secret, brine. In a pot of boiling water, add sugar and salt, and that's it. You want about 3% salt for the amount of water you have, and now it's time to add any seasonings you want. I like bay leaves for the earthiness, and peppercorns for a little bit of spice. Here I have some brine that's been chilled. So important not to add cold, to hot. This has to be cold, this has to be cold. Good things don't happen when it goes the other way. So, this is gonna take a bath for the next 12 hours. If they're half the size, six hours. What goes better with pork than more pork? Mirepoix, the base of all cooking, into a pan with bacon rendering out. This is gonna cook slowly and caramelize in the bacon fat. Pork and fruit, always best friends. It's pear season, so I'm going with pears. Now, this filling is really, really rich because of the bacon fat and the bacon, and the pork is very rich cut of meat as well. So in order to counter that, I'm gonna add some sour cherries. This just needs to cook until the pears have broken down and become soft. So all those little caramelized bits in the bottom, that's all flavor that I want inside my stuffing of my pork chop. So in order to get that off, I have to add a liquid. You could add wine, I'm gonna add beer. And just like when you're cooking with wine, cooking with beer, if it's not good enough to drink, it's not good enough to cook with. This just needs to reduce down for a second. You see all those brown bits coming off the bottom. That's all flavor. Okay. Take this stuff into the next level. I want to make it very, very rich. So to complement the smoke that's coming from the grill, I've got some smoked cheddar. That goes in and turn off the heat. Otherwise, the cheese is going to get grainy. I don't want my stuffing to be grainy. So as this starts to melt, it wouldn't be a stuffing without some bread. In this case, panko. If I don't add this, what's going to happen is as the pork chop cooks, the stuffing is going to ooze out because it doesn't have a binder in it. It needs something to hold it all together. Pork is hands down my favorite meat. I love cooking with it because it's so versatile. I have my pork that's been in a brine for 12 hours. Take it out and pat it dry. And I'm gonna stuff these bad boys. So the easiest point of access would be through here. But I don't wanna do that because what's gonna happen when I put it on the grill is that as it cooks, all that stuffing is gonna come out and it's not gonna be a stuffed pork chop anymore. So I'm gonna go down in towards the bone and create a little pocket with the tip of my paring knife. And you can be generous with this and feel around until you go right almost to the edge. You want to get as much stuffing in there as possible. You want to get in there as much as possible. Use your thumbs to push it into the corner. I want these packed with flavor. They're going to be so tender and so juicy. It's a good day, I'm having a beer at 9 in the morning. Love that sound. Important to have a hot grill, otherwise it's all gonna stick. Don't be dad at a barbecue, start pressing on it to hear the sizzle and all the stuff like this. Leave it be, it's gonna cook. So 
only want to rotate these once on each side, 90 degrees, and that's going to give me that nice crisscross pattern for presentation. All right, patience pays off. We didn't touch it. We weren't down at a barbecue. Now check this out. Exactly what I'm looking for. These are beauties. So important to let these rest. Check this out. Ready, Sean? Mm -hmm. That looks great. Remember I said how much I didn't like dry pork chops? Now you don't have to have them anymore. The brine did its job. The stuffing's keeping it nice and moist. Can't wait to try this. exactly what I wanted. He big, I try this. The stuffed double pork chop, of course, right off the bat, is an impressive cut of meat. Two bones, big fat chop, open it up and fill it with this amazing stuffing. The dried cherries bring the acidity and just make the whole thing pop as you're eating it. Tenderloin. Says it right in the name. This is the most tender cut of meat on the pig, but it contains little to no fat, so it's very easy to overcook. First thing I have to do is remove this white membrane called silver skin. Number one, I don't want to eat this. And number two, when this pork cooks, it's going to cause the meat to shrink up. I don't want that. I'm gonna cook this pork in this bag. What? OMG, here we go. This is actually a technique that's been around for a very long time called sous vide, which is French for under vacuum. So this pork is gonna cook in its own little environment. So I wanna add some aromatics. Because it's the controlled environment, whatever's in there is gonna flavor the pork very, very well. All right. This bad boy here is a vacuum sealer. This costs as much as a nice bottle of wine, but it's gonna last you a lot longer. So with your pork in the bag, find the hole. Hey. All right. One pork with aromatics in a bag with no air. What this is, is called an immersion circulator. This is a bucket of water. What this does is this controls the temperature of this water very, very precisely. Why I remove all the air from the bag is because if I didn't, it wouldn't sink and the pork would only cook on one side because it's floating on the top. This is gonna cook that pork to a precise internal temperature of wherever I set this at. It's always gonna maintain the exact same temperature all the time. That's why this is so perfect. And after the water bath, that's what I'm left with. Doesn't look like much. But it's cooked perfectly from edge to edge all the way through. I just need to caramelize the outside. So a little bit of oil in an extremely hot pan. What I don't want to do is have this pork stay in this pan too long. The longer it stays in here, the more the inside is going to cook, and I don't want that. OK, ready for a turn? is ready to go. But I wouldn't be a chef if I didn't have a sauce to go with this. <laughs> so now the shallots are starting to caramelize. So you have some wine left over from Saturday night? Add it. This is a restaurant quality pan sauce, and pan gravy is the noblest of all gravies. 
All right, so here's the pork. Sous vide cooked pork. Perfect from edge to edge. Look at this, Sean. I'll check this out. No look cut. Tell me how that looks. Is it perfect? There we go. One end, the middle, the other end. Perfect medium all the way through. Oh, man. Exactly the way pork tenderloin should be. Pork and gravy, what's better than that? Kiba, try this. Wow, perfectly cooked. The circulator does such a great job. Just set it, forget it. Tenderloin is so easy to overcook, and it's such a tragedy when it actually happens. Using this technique of sous vide, just being able to drop it, walk away, finish everything else, watch a TV show, come back, you know, your main course is ready. This here is a pork hock. This is tough as nails. But I'm gonna make this thing fall off the bone using three techniques. Aromatics into the pot. Now my pork hock's gonna go for a little swim. Bye bye, piggy. Thank you. So this is that. As the days get shorter and colder, I look towards braising meats and longer cooking. The soy sauce is pure flavor that's gonna go into all those little holes. Although we never really ate pork hocks growing up, we were more of a pork chops and applesauce type of family. This is a really fun technique. In here is very hot oil. What I'm gonna be doing is plunging this into there. A good tip to remember, actually the only tip to remember at this point, is to make sure that your pot is only half full of oil, because once this goes in, it's gonna raise the level of the oil. You wanna make sure everyone's standing back, kids are out of the way, and then into the pot. This is gonna bubble and pop. So get ready for it. You ready? <laughs> this oil is nuclear f hot, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See ya. You're fine now. You're fine now. It's okay. Don't worry. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. It's just the initial, uh, the initial plunge. Oh yeah. Okay. This is incredible. This is not to crisp up the skin. This is going to give flavor to the final braise. So that was step two. Now on to step three. So this is all about Asian flavors. Sweet, salty, bitter, umami, and acid. Aramax go in, everybody in the pool. In goes this bad boy. We'll wave goodbye for a couple hours. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, big reveal. Ready for this? Wow. Remember how I said it was gonna fall off the bone? Check this out. Normally I would have rested this, but I just couldn't wait. It smelled too good. <laughs> this thing used to be a boot, and now it's just falling off the bone. And the twofer to this whole thing is what's in the pot is your sauce. Guys, you gotta come down and try this. Yeah, I always cook at home. I like spending time with my son. Barbecue, open fire, we make an event out of it and we have a really good time. Trying new things, open a book, show me what you want. Let's try and make it.
porchetta, my favorite thing to make in the entire world. Speaking of porchetta, look at this baby. Now this is gonna be my spin on an Italian classic. <clears throat> so what I have is the loin, the belly, the fat cap, and the skin. First thing I have to do is score the skin. Best tool for the job, don't take this out of dad's toolkit. Make sure you use a nice new one, but you can set the depth. What that's gonna do is allow me to get some of the seasoning into the flesh underneath the skin, but allow the fat to render out as this cooks slowly in the oven. So I wanna increase the surface area of this so I can get as much flavor in there as possible. How do I do that? By butterflying the loin. And simply running your knife through the loin to open it up, just like an envelope. There. Now I've got a blank canvas to work with. The holy trinity of herbs for my porchetta. Rosemary and pork, always best friends. Time for earthiness, and the undisputed king of herbs, in my opinion, parsley. I want just enough oil for this to spin and break up all the herbs, but not so much that it's greasy. So there's no real way of doing this without getting messy, so it's just best to get your hands dirty. <laughs> All right, that's a good little pork massage. But that's what I'm talking about. This is bang on. Thank you, chef. So the porchetta is good to go, but I'm not done yet. I want to do a little twist on a classic from Piedmont called Vitello Tonato, a tuna mayonnaise, which is basically an emulsion. So briny capers, sharp Dijon, and canned tuna. So there's a lot of debate over tuna and oil or tuna and water. Uh, for this, I prefer tuna and water because I'm gonna be adding a lot of oil to this already. That's bang on. Oh yeah. All right, you ready for this? Look at that. That's taking me to the promised land right there. All that fat cap, and the belly has rendered through the loin, all the herbs inside. Wow. Check this out, guys, look. Crackling, exactly what I wanted. I 
promised you crackling? Crackling. Guys, dig in, try this. Sure. Get in there, guys. Yeah, get some of that. Huh. This is my favorite dish by far. To you, Chef. Cheers, everyone. To the pig. Cheers. Growing up at home, we never had to fend for ourselves for dinner. It was actually always a celebration. It was important for me when I became a chef to sort of pay that forward to, to the guests and the people around me.